My name is Kristen Butera. I'm in the Kennesaw State University Instructional Education Specialist Program. The title of my capstone is The Effective Use of Chromebooks in the Classroom. In 1913, Thomas Edison said, books will soon be obsolete in the public schools. Scholars will be instructed through their eyes. It is possible to teach every brand of human knowledge with motion picture. Our school system will be completely changed inside of 10 years. While Thomas Edison was speaking of film, his predictions of change in education with the use of technology is still pertinent today. Technology in the classroom is here to stay. Teachers are expected to use technology in their classroom as a part of their instruction. There are many reasons why teachers are not using technology effectively in their classrooms. Delgado, Wardlow, McKnight, and O'Malley identified six common barriers of technology integration among teachers. Resources, knowledge and skill, institution, attitude and beliefs, assessment, and subject culture. Resources have been identified as the most prominent barrier. Resources are considered a lack of adequate hardware and software available for teachers to use in conjunction with their lessons. Schools are addressing this issue in different ways. Many schools have adopted a bring your own device program so that students may have access to technology during the school day. Changing the classroom structure into a blended learning environment is also a way to combat the lack of technology. Blended learning creates a hybrid classroom where students are taught using a combination of technology and face-to-face -face instruction. This creates a way for teachers to use technology in their instruction when technology is limited. The blending learning environment creates smaller numbers of students that need specific technology at a given time. Another way to address this issue is use the flipped classroom model of instruction. In a flipped classroom, students work on notes and individual assignments at home. In class, students are able to work on the concepts that they are learning through more engaging tasks. The second leading barrier of technology integration is the lack of knowledge and skill to use the technology effectively. Teachers are often overwhelmed by technology options presented to them, usually with little or no training. Professional development can help improve how a teacher effectively uses technology in his or her classroom. The way to get teachers to use technology effectively in their classroom is to provide them with ongoing professional development that is geared specifically to the technology that the teacher would use in his or her classroom. The demands that are put on teachers are ever increasing. Larger class sizes, high stakes testing, and the push to differentiate for each student. Technology can assist in creating the differentiation that students need, as well as provide more one-on-one -on -one attention to students. Blended learning, flipped classrooms, personalized learning, and station rotations are a few ways that teachers can effectively begin to incorporate technology into their instruction, as well as address the many different needs of their students. Teachers need professional development in small increments so that they can begin to practice the new skills that they are learning. The instructional leaders in a school should choose one or two specific features or a program or small applications to show teachers. Furthermore, instructional leaders should allow teachers time to implement the new technology into their instruction before introducing additional new tools. When planning professional development, it is important to keep the needs of teachers in mind. The need for teachers to be able to use technology effectively in their classrooms is evident. In order to address the need for support with instructional technology in our school, teachers need to feel more confident in their ability to deliver technology-rich lessons that are learner-centered and incorporate higher-order thinking skills within specific content areas. The way to address this need is to deliver quality, ongoing professional development to teachers based on digital tools that they can easily implement in their classrooms. The following objectives helped me reach my goal of helping teachers use Chromebooks effectively in the classroom. Increase the effective use of Chromebooks as a learning tool in the classroom. Improve the teacher's comfort level for planning lessons 
that effectively use Chromebooks as a learning tool and provide teachers with the resources that they need in order to effectively use a Chromebook as a learning tool. The first activity was to design and implement a survey. The survey assessed how often teachers are having students use Chromebooks, how Chromebooks are currently being used, and the teacher's comfort level with delivering effective lessons using Chromebooks. The surveys also asked the teachers for input regarding the type of digital tools they would like to learn more about during our professional learning series. The results of this survey directly influenced the digital tools shared during our professional development series. The second activity of the project was to develop and deliver a professional development series which consisted of four classes based on the survey results. All faculty members were invited to attend the sessions. During each session, teachers were able to see a tool introduced and demonstrated. They also received coaching on the new tool and have an opportunity to work with the tool. At the conclusion of each session, teachers were asked to complete a survey to determine the effectiveness of the session, as well as to provide feedback and help determine the area of need to be addressed in the next session. The final activity for this project was to create, distribute, and analyze a post survey to teachers who attended the professional development series. The surveys evaluated how the teachers are now using technology in their classroom after attending the professional development series, as well as their comfort level with the technology. The survey was similar to the original survey. Additionally, teachers were asked for recommendations to improve the series. Data is compared between both surveys to see if the professional development series was successful in helping teachers effectively use the Chromebooks in their classrooms. The implementation of any project should be evaluated to determine if the objectives and goals of that project are being reached, as well as to see if there's room for improvement. In this project, each activity will be evaluated to determine if the objectives for that particular activity have been met. Each evaluation will help determine if teachers are beginning to use technology more frequently in their classrooms. To evaluate the usefulness of each session, I will create a short survey that will ask participants if they feel more comfortable with the technology tools that have been shared and their likelihood of using the tool in their classroom. The survey will include a place for comments on how to improve the session for next time. The data from the survey will help in the development of the objectives for the next session. After the PL series has been complete, the final part of this project will be to design and implement a post survey. The analysis of the results will help measure the success of the project and whether or not the objectives were met. The overall project went as planned. However, instead of sharing new Web 2.0 tools in three of the four sessions, the focus of the professional development series changed as a direct result of the survey administered after the first professional development class. Teachers asked that the series focus on Blackboard tools in conjunction with the Chromebooks for Learning. The change in plans occurred due to the need expressed from the faculty in the post-survey results after Session 1. Blackboard is a learning management system that is new to Fayette County Schools this year. Teachers were struggling with ways to use Blackboard beyond simply posting homework on the homework calendar and posting documents needed for class. The result of the survey indicated the need for help with Blackboard in the areas of creating and administering a test, creating user groups in the gradebook, as well as the use of the blogging tool. In each of the three remaining sessions, utilizing a tool in Blackboard was the focus rather than introducing new Web 2.0 tools. The biggest obstacle was being able to address the varying levels of comfort and skill within the faculty at Booth. Workshops were delivered during grade level meetings and were approximately 20 participants per grade level. Within each session, the comfort level of teachers ranged from those who were extremely comfortable using technology to enhance learning on a regular basis to teachers that very rarely use technology to enhance learning. It was imperative that the sessions were differentiated in order to make the workshops beneficial to all teachers. In addition to the workshop, teachers were able to participate in one-on-one -on -one sessions for additional support as needed. The overall program was successful in helping teachers change their beliefs about using technology in their classroom 
as well as using technology more effectively in their classrooms. Prior to the professional development series, fewer than 40% of the faculty surveyed were using Chromebooks on a regular basis to enhance learning. After the professional development series, 100% of the faculty surveyed used the Chromebooks on a monthly, weekly, or daily basis to enhance learning. The increase can be contributed to a change in the technology comfort levels within the faculty. Prior to the professional development series, only 15% of faculty surveyed strongly agreed that students using the internet to create a product of learning uses higher order thinking skills. After the professional development series, 70% of the faculty surveyed strongly agreed that higher order thinking skills were used when students create a product of learning while using the internet. In the post survey, when teachers were asked if technology helps to improve their teaching ability, 80% of the faculty agreed. The pre-survey only showed 55% of the faculty agreed with that statement. In the post-survey, teachers were asked if technology has changed the way that they teach, and 100% of the faculty surveyed either agreed or strongly agreed with that statement. The pre-survey showed that only 74% of the faculty agreed with that statement. Each session within the four-part professional development series focused on a different tool that teachers could use. The first class focused on the web-based mind mapping tool Poplet. Prior to the class, 85% of the faculty survey had never heard of this tool, and after the session, 100% of the faculty surveyed felt prepared to use this tool in their classroom. The second session focused on the test generator tool within Blackboard. 90% of the faculty surveyed felt prepared to use this tool in their classroom, while 60% of the faculty surveyed are regularly using it in their classroom. The third class focused on the blogging tool in Blackboard. 80% of the faculty felt prepared to implement the tool in their classroom, while 85% of the language arts teachers surveyed have indicated that they are using the tool in their classroom. In order to increase differentiation and make it easier to process for teachers, the last session focused on creating groups in Blackboard. At the end of the session, 80% of the faculty survey reported that they are prepared to implement this tool in their classroom. In a follow-up survey, 40% of the faculty have begun using this tool in Blackboard this past school year. Throughout this project, I learned several important skills related to technology facilitation. First, I learned that while adult learners differ from adolescent learners, one must present and teach material in a way that is engaging, relevant, and differentiated. In addition, I learned that those that teach professional development courses should not be the sage on the stage, but rather a facilitator of learning. Just as student learners differ in ability to acquire knowledge, so do adult learners. As a result, it is important that adult learners are provided with differentiated activities and that adult learners are allowed to have some independence and say so throughout the learning process. Finally, I learned that because a teacher is a busy, dedicated professional, he or she learns best when they can immediately apply what they are learning to their craft. In addition to learning about technology facilitation, I also learned several things about being a leader. Classroom leaders must have confidence in their abilities because they are often observed by their peers. Furthermore, I learned that classroom leaders must have a positive attitude, be a problem solver, and critical thinkers. A leader must be passionate about lifelong learning. Leaders must also be flexible and able to communicate effectively, and they should expect teachers to be professionals.